we went through a time change and um but Pippi's like clockwork with the old time so she was coming at, yeah 6 35 now it's 7 35 and here she is no idea what we're doing now. So she ate a bunch of nuts. Now she's frantically burying nuts in the really cold dirt. She just went up and uh, went and got the watering pail. She's out frantically burying nuts. Can I zoom in on her here? It's still kind of dark. There she is. Yeah, so she's burying nuts even though it's really cold and, you know, the ground is really cold. Um, so I don't know how she's doing it. time change today so I had taken some video um, a couple days to show what kind of squirrels start showing up to compare do they know when the time changes <laughs> I'm gonna Pippi right away showed that they go by the Sun not the clock because she's been showing up at 635 in the morning in order to not come out during the day she comes in the morning and the night and or the night I should say <sighs> That interruption was because there was just a fox out front that I went and took care of. Thankfully, he didn't have anything. Um, living here is so hard. That's all I can say. I've never done anything like this. School, work, those are all hard. They're still hard. Work is very hard. But trying to save the lives of innocent animals from predators is harder than anything I've ever had to do. It takes so much out because you're so invested in it and um, the anxiety and the, you know, the fear and the nightmares and where your mind goes when all of a sudden a squirrel goes missing for a couple days. It's horrible. Um, but so anyway, here's the thing. The squirrels are so smart. So they figured out because I got to thinking about this. Not only did they figure out to turn their schedule upside down so that it would look like nobody lived here to keep the hawks away. But in addition to that, to do that, I was instrumental. I am instrumental in that. They can come to me anytime. They could come to me at three in the morning and I would know and I'd be able to go there and take care of them. Somehow they figured out that them going to the door wall calls me to the door wall and that they're able to do that whenever that they because it used to be they knew me because i was always outside <sighs> okay i just went and checked the hawk is still not there good or the hawk the fox is still gone okay um so yeah so they figured out a way to pull me into their scheme <laughs> to fool the hawks to convince the hawks that they don't live here and i'm a part of that like because that when they are coming down at night, they are in danger. Um, but they're taking a calculated risk of what's the greater danger, coming down for 10 or 15 minutes at night, being on the deck with me, and then just running like hell back to their place, or coming out during the day and risking hawks moving into nearby nests and being around all the time. So they've made a calculated risk. They've waited a weighted risk decision. They made that decision. They made a calculated decision. And then somehow they all band together. Now, but this isn't new because I saw this two years ago when they all did a mass exodus on the same day. There's a biologist that lives near here. He saw the same thing. So same day, boom, mass exodus, everybody goes. I only had five squirrels remaining and they were all five pregnant. So, you know, and they set up like primary, secondary, and sometimes even tertiary nests for their kids. So, Maybe they just couldn't have gone, but whatever the deal. 
everybody else mass exodus. Now this time, there, it's like a pact and they're all sequestering. It's amazing. And um, they're following it really well. Other than I will say Condo Girl, she's cheating. She Condo Girl is coming out, I don't know. I've seen her, I feel like, a lot of times per day. But the rest of them I'm seeing mostly once per day. Um, too Much was a little late to the memo. He, he took the first day or two, he was coming more often. And I think he was taking advantage of the fact that everyone else was gone and that he was able to get as much of me as he wanted, you know, because he gets chased out of here because he's, he walks the line of riffraff because he lives very far away. But when he comes here, he doesn't disturb anything. He doesn't go after everybody's cabins and try to steal their cabins. He doesn't go after the women. He doesn't steal their food. So he's mostly tolerated and much better now than he used to be. But he had to prove himself. He had to prove that I'm here in peace. I just want the nuts from Amy, you know, not from their stashes. He was cheating a little at first and coming multiple times a day like kind of girl is. But um, now he's backed off and he's doing like morning. Some days it's only mornings. Some days it's morning, way morning and end of the day. Today it was morning. I don't know if I'll see him again. So it's like they all have this pact. And for the most part, they're all in on it. They're all doing it. I mean, they're all coming. They're coming at night and almost in staggered times too, which I wondered, like, did they plan this out? Like, it'll be like Mealy Mouth comes first um, at like... I don't know, I timed it yesterday, let's say 5.30, 6.30, whatever time it was. And then they kind of come and they kind of almost stagger and they'll come and they'll stay for like 10 minutes, throwing nuts and like hell. They figured out what they needed to do. They figured out how I could be instrumental in the whole thing because in order to only come out at night and for very short bursts of time, you need to have an assured food source, you know, something you can get the food real quick, get a lunch down and get up for the next 24 hours and water. Well, I put water out for them all the time. So now they've actually trained me. I understand their pattern now. It didn't take long. And um, so now I normally used to just put water out in the morning. Now, since I know that they're really going to come down um, later, I wait. I put the waters out like, I don't know when, I'm doing 435, whatever. When I feel like it's an hour or two before they're going to start coming. I put out fresh water everywhere, knowing that they're going to have to get water for the next 24 hours and then sit in a hole in a tree. I'm setting my alarm now to get up in time for Pippi. Uh, she trained me in one day, showed me what she needed, what time she needed it. So now my alarm gets set to make sure that in this morning, she, she's like clockwork. You know, it was 6.30, 6.30, 6.30, 6.35 actually. Now today, we had a time change. Today was 7.35. It was unbelievable. So she's dead on. Um, and uh, anyway, I think they're brilliant and they probably are pretty happy to know me, but they, I'm like the perfect robot. They just train me very quickly. The way Hansi got me trained the first time, I was about to go inside, it was the end of the night, it was dark, I don't remember why I was out, and man, she came tearing down her tree. She came running so fast and those little feet just flying on that bark like, don't you go anywhere. <laughs> she was funny. She made it very clear by the pace that she was coming down that tree that I was not to go anywhere. And um, it was cool. And she does it every night now. She just comes tearing down that tree like, I'm coming, don't you go anywhere. <laughs> I think that's why we all get along so well. We understand each other. I don't know why. <laughs> As humans, we are coddled in a lot of ways that wild animals aren't. But I'm gonna try to make these guys as safe as I can in any way I can. And I don't think I have a choice anymore anyway, because apparently they train me. I think they've got me like Pavlov's dog. Like, okay, we're going to need you at this place at this time with the door wall open, you know, 